Hello, Bells Palsy, you're today. It, I'm going to talk about um, axonotmesis, which is the second degree of nerve injury or stage two. And um, if you haven't watched uh, stage one, um, neuropraxia, you should probably check that one first. So with the second degree injury, uh, also called axonotmesis, uh, that occur when the facial nerve has been exposed to a greater amount of swelling and uh, compression, and the compression has been prolonged. So the outer cover of the nerve remains intact, but the nerve fibers inside are damaged and cannot receive essential nutrients and oxygen. So without, uh, without the supplies, the nerve starts to shrink and uh, wither. So um, the as the swelling subsides and the flow of nutrients and oxygens are restored, the facial nerve slowly starts to repair itself at the rate of one millimeter per day. Uh, and that is in the absolute best conditions. Uh, so considering the length of the two longest branch of the facial nerve, the temporal, the one that goes to your forehead, and the one that goes to your mandible or your lower jaw, um, you, so you can understand why the average time for healing uh, for most people is at least uh, three months or 100 days. Uh, those branches being uh, there about you know, 10 centimeters, so that's 100 millimeters long, about. Uh, so, uh, and of course, many scenarios are, po are possible, but this is just to put in perspective like the, the, the why it's taking so long uh, to, to regain movement uh, in most cases. So, um, with most people with this type of uh, nerve injury, they start to notice early signs of recovery are approximately 12 to 16 weeks following the onset of their symptoms. So that's about three or four months. So there are three degrees of axonotmesis. So stage two, stage three, and stage four. So for stage two, um, and please follow with all the graphic on this post. Um, because you can't really see it from here, but so with stage two, the endoneurium is intact. Um, you can expect a four month recovery for young people uh, if you're healthy as well, and generally six month recovery for older people. Uh, the nerve heals back to its original status. So complete recovery depends on a number of factors, including the timely removal of the, of the compression and also uh, axon regeneration. So the st with stage three, the endoneurium is damaged. And with stage four, the endoneurium and the perineuriums are damaged. So when the endoneurium is interrupted, the nerve will try to regrow, but it will grow back to uh, some, very often another bundle, which is what lead to synkinesis. That is one of the, the causes of synkinesis. Uh, so this at that stage, that's an unavoidable symptoms of a slow facial nerve recovery. And people with axonotmesis type injury will, will develop synchinesis. Uh, when the nerve does recover, uh, facial movement are not so easy to control. Uh, this is where uh, neuroplasticity comes in the picture for uh, rehabilitation and facial rehab. Um, and where it's also more about training your brain versus training the muscle. Um, and remember that facial rehab is not about strength and more about movement control. So up until stage three, um, stage three axonotmesis, you can expect the nerve to heal without complications. At stage three and four, synchinesis will happen. Uh, so hopefully this was helpful uh, and make you understand what stage of nerve injury you might have suffered with your facial paralysis, depending on um, your recovery and the amount of recovery. Uh, and again, the most important thing you can do for your recovery when you first notice facial paralysis symptoms is to get uh, medical attention right away and get prescribed steroids to decrease the inflammation and the compression of the facial nerve. The least time uh, the nerve um, stays inflamed and with the least amount of compression, the more chance you have to recover. Uh, so we will have one more stage um, to cover, to discuss, and that is a neurotmesis. And that is uh, not good news. So stay tuned for that episode. Take care.